Tell me a little bit about Salt River Project, or SRP as we call it. SRP is a 115-year-old company in metropolitan Phoenix, Arizona. We serve a million power customers and 25,000 water customers. And the water service we provide is flood irrigation to uh, agriculture, parks, schools, uh, and homes. And then uh, for potable water, we deliver water in bulk to the cities. So Mike, tell me about your background and role at SRP. I have been at SRP for 38 years now. I hired on in uh, 1979 as a rates analyst and I worked my way through a variety of positions in the finance function, ended up as corporate treasurer and the head of all of financial services operations. I then went to information systems and headed up application development for two years and then was tapped to go uh, head up customer service. And that was in 1994. And beginning in 2011, we had a major corporate reorganization and I was promoted uh, to the senior staff and picked up responsibility for distribution of power and delivery of water as well. SRP is known as the best at customer satisfaction. What's the key to that success? It's really been since I came on board in 1994 that we've had an incredible focus on the customer. SRP was gearing up for deregulation that they saw that would occur in the state of Arizona. Uh, and we had a foray into deregulation in 1998 before it was pended. Uh, we really focused on getting handling times down in the call center, wait times down, uh, and providing new services to customers. Uh, the deregulation came and went for us, but the focus on the customer did, did not. We're very, very concerned with how customers perceive SRP. Uh, we spend a lot of time to ensure that our processes are easy and pleasant. So what's next? Where do you go when you're the best? As good as we think we are, uh, looking at the customer satisfaction stats uh, across industries, uh, while we uh, score very, very well for uh, the power industry, we are middling uh, across all industries. So our goal, long run, is to be among the best across all industries. Speak to your journey to build the culture that has led to this year in, year out customer satisfaction. SRP has a, a number of pricing options uh, for uh, customers in both the residential class and the commercial class. Uh, we don't always do a good job at ensuring customers are aware of these options. So we're redoubling efforts uh, to encourage customers to participate in our optional time of use tariffs. At the same time, we are developing new tools to help customers better manage their energy and optimize savings on these optional tariffs. Conventional wisdom says our customers don't really want to think about us or communicate with us. Tell me your view. We are finding that it's very difficult to over communicate to customers, uh, that they want more and more outage information. Just advising them of the outage is not enough. They want recurring updates. Uh, at first, we were very concerned that we, they would tire of our texts and emails. We're finding that not to be the case. They want that information. They want the billing information. Uh, so we think it is a very good way to build uh, rapport with our customers. We're in a world of digital channels with a lot of options for our customers. How do you choose what to do where? You know, we'll hear from customers, you're a monopoly. I don't have choice. Um, I can't go somewhere else. Yet we have found over the years that by giving customers options, we take that concern away and we give customers uh, a sense of control. Uh, we have provided options, for example, for our residential customers since 1980. And today we have at least four different pricing options uh, for our customers. Not only do we have a basic uh, per kilowatt hour rate for residential customers, but we have uh, at least three other time of use rate options for them with differing on and off peak hours for them to choose from, whatever best fits their lifestyle. 
So how are you making your decisions about which channels, how far you go in the future? You know, one of the things that I believe SRP does very well is to listen to its customers. We have the JD Power research, we have uh, bi-monthly research uh, that SRP sponsors. Uh, SRP is in the field, uh, you know, every other month uh, gathering data and we get a good deal of uh, verbatims and, and insights back uh, from that research. We have transactional survey research uh, for uh, all contacts uh, through our phone center. We mine that data, look for, for customer preferences, and we try, just like we try to provide billing and payment options, we try to provide uh, new services that would appeal to uh, distinct segments of customers. We can't afford to do all things in all channels for all customers, uh, but we try to, to pick those that would be most meaningful and, and also those th that could provide cost savings for SRP as well. Over the years, as we've rolled out more and more functionality, we have also been able to drive lower cost per customer in, in terms of our budget. Uh, so it's really a win-win there. Speak to the process you've used with your team to chart what's next for SRP. SRP has a very, very strong customer ethic, and it starts at the very top of the company. Uh, and all of the senior leadership uh, really models uh, that customer ethic. And we're very careful to walk our talk. Uh, we expect all the management to do the same. We encourage employees to do that as well. And frontline employees, when we see uh, an interaction going not so well, we will uh, very politely and, and uh, graciously coach that employee. We like to hire for personality. We actually go through a speed dating process uh, with 20 or 30 employees and 20 or 30 prospective uh, contact center employees. And uh, we'll ask a question and give them 90 seconds to respond, and then everyone gets up, moves to the next chair. We're looking for a smile in the voice, and then we'll train for the skill. And we found that that has, has done remarkable things for us. Uh, we, our, our turnover has dropped. We have employees that are, are more respectful of the customer. So that's, that's one of the things that we do. We also realize that we may have uh, uh, managers and supervisors that really are not the best managers and supervisors and not respectful of staff. Uh, and we go through coaching and discipline with them. And on occasion, we'll even, e even have terminations there. Good employees need good managers. What does it take for a utility to be more like Uber or Amazon? It's very challenging for a utility to be like Uber or Amazon. Uh, we uh, are a very conservative industry that attracts very conservative employees. We are not uh, rewarded for taking big risks. You know, that said, I think uh, much of the success in customer service uh, that Salt River Project has enjoyed has come uh, from being a little farther out on the edge and taking more risk and risks that other utilities uh, would, would shy away from. And that has enabled us to be the first uh, over a number of years.